so this is the gem we've got in here today. Doesn't look it, but it's been sitting outside a long time. Maybe it does look it. Doesn't look it to me, though. I've seen a lot worse. This thing's spent a lot of time outside. Oh, cap's not on. It's got a floaty. It's not all rusted. That's a first. Not bad. So I've been working on this thing for a little while here. I decided I need something to mow that hill out there. Buying something is out of the question, so it was time to take a pick out of one of those uh, machines on the hill. This was the one that had been running the soonest, which was probably six, uh, seven years ago is the last time it ran. So uh, I've been kind of picking away. I'll show you the pictures. You'll see the pictures of what I've been through already. I've already taken that top of the engine off and uh, cleaned the big packed mouse nest out of there. That was nice. <laughs> oh, stunk like hell. <laughs> there was a couple dead mice in there. It was, it was, uh, my graveyard and septic tank all rolled into one. <coughs> Yummy. Oh, there's the coil. I found the coil. Oh, man. This is horrendous. Oh, there's a mouse. Maybe. Parts of one. Well, it's got a coil in it. That's a good thing. Yeah, pretty pleasant. Then the starter, I arced across the starter back there. Got a bunch of sparks and no movement. So I came over here and I put the battery right on there and grounded it here. Got nothing but a bunch of sparks and a lot of heat. So this thing was uh, locked up solid. So I, I'll show you some pictures of that. I, I didn't, well, I kind of wish I filmed that. That would have been a little bit interesting, but uh, what happened was, yeah, I had to take the whole thing apart. And there's four brushes in here. So, of course, as soon as you pull that cover off, twang, they all, they're all under spring pressure, so they all come out. And it's like, how the hell am I going to get these things back in? And I'll show you. You'll see the pictures here of uh, how I got that back together. Happened to find four self-tappers, which worked out great. You know, screwed them in just tight enough to hold the brushes, and it worked perfect. Put them back together, removed the screws, and they all snapped into place, and everything's good. It works. Tested it, so that's that. So that's done, and I had to do some wiring. The switch that was in here was, uh, it's supposed to be waterproof, but it was pretty, you know, this part was intact. This I reused this uh, rubber here. You're not supposed to reuse your rubbers, but in this case, we'll make an exception. All that's doing is taking battery power and sending it to the uh, solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor here. This thing I got unplugged right now. So that's uh, what we're gonna be doing today. Fuel is so crappy today. You know, in in America, we, we put uh, ethanol in the fuel. I mean, uh, I don't wanna get started on that. It, it kind of pisses me off. It, you know, I wanna help American farmers. I really do, but not in the way that, not in this way. Just put it that way. The government has got its fingers in it, and anything they touch, they screw up. And uh, I'm going to start getting mad, so I'm not even going to go there. Ethanol and a fuel, so what you're dealing with with that is uh, constant carburetor issues. That's 90% of what I do in this shop is cleaning small engine carburetors. You can see all the mowers I got here. Various states of repair and disrepair. Fueling is the number one. They're always having fuel problems, and... And, uh, you know, this younger generation, I'm going to tell you, you guys don't know what it's like. There's a lot of young guys I, I hear all the time, you know, oh, points suck and carburetors suck. Well, you know what? They didn't suck. In the, in the 60s and 70s, they were. Did what they were supposed to do. Never had problems like this. You could run a piece of equipment for friggin' 10 years. You could leave it outside 24-7, sit outside, unburied under eight feet of snow, go out there in the, in the spring and give it one pull sometimes and it would fire right up. Sometimes they take you three poles. Oh, that was tough. You know, I mean, the stuff was well built. It was designed good. We had fuel that actually worked. It didn't have water loving ethanol in it. As uh, a lot of stuff is changing, it ain't changing for the better. That's uh, a whole nother topic for another day. But <clears throat> so we're gonna focus on that. But I wanted to give you the backstory on this thing. So you're probably wondering why there's half a lawnmower blade hanging off the side of this thing. So the story with this thing, I'll go back from the beginning. If you don't want to hear it, you can skip. Start off as a, a lawn tractor sitting on the side of the road that my brother saw while doing it, out doing his thing. And uh, he texted me. He said, hey, there's a Murray lawn tractor for free on the side of the road. He goes, I don't know what's wrong with it. Looks pretty nice, though. I said, yeah, grab it. So he grabbed it. And uh, one way or the other, it ended up here. I don't remember if he brought it here or I went and got it. I think he brought it here. Dropped it off. 
and uh, it's been here ever since. So <laughs> that was 2011. This is quite a while ago, 11 years at this point. So it sat here for two years outside. Who knows how long it sat at that guy's house outside. The problem it had was uh, when you put a load on it, like if you put it in six gear and started climbing a little grade, it would start doing this thing. It would give you a whiplash. It, like every, every rotation of a gear, it would skip and skip and skip. And it, it would do it in all gears, but in six gear, it, it was really noticeable. So what that ended up being, I'll show you the pictures of that, and then it ended up being uh, shift keys, two little $15 cheap shift keys it was a it was a nice easy easy fix but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here because uh i didn't decide to do anything with this thing until i decided i was going to give it to my neighbor my next door neighbor he's uh right now he's pushing 92 years old so this was 2011 so he's about 81 and he's he's had about <laughs> seven hip replacement surgeries out of countless knee replacement surgeries he has a hard time moving around so he had one of those i don't know what you call them the hover rounds the, the, the electric things and uh those things you know we're in the country out here you know we're, we may be in massachusetts but this is a little slice of heaven right here we're out in the country and a hover around doesn't do too well <laughs> he's not going over this rough stuff mud and sticks and everything else so uh he was getting stuck and falling off the thing flipping it over and everything i said geez i you know I'm not doing anything with this tractor it's like i think this would be a good substitute so i ran it by him and he was like we'll take the deck off you know i'll put a step on it for you and he's like, hey, yeah that sounds good so that's what i did so i i built him a little step he can't lift his leg very high so i made a little step for him you know that holds my body weight. Thing's pretty strong. So he was able to get up and on this thing, and he ran it for, uh, let's see, that was two years in my yard, 2013. So that was when I decided to get into the transmission. The shift keys, you know, I split the transmission apart, did all the shift keys. This was many, many moons before I decided to do YouTube videos. Would have made a good video. So we put the shift keys in. The thing was mint after that. It ran ran fantastic. The the float bow, I'll show you a picture of the float bow. It was like mud. Oh, man, I've never seen anything in a float bow like that it looked like swamp water and it smelled like it too it was nasty it was gray it was black yeah so we cleaned it up got it running for him and he ran it for probably i want to say three years well he, he used it fairly regularly the first couple of years and then it started getting hotter and hotter for him to move around so he started using it less and less it ended up sitting out in his yard <laughs> from uh, well you figure the whole time he had it he parked it outside he never once covered this thing and put it in his shed so from 2013 let's see it ended up in my possession again in 2018 i want to say it was outside <laughs> 40, 50, 60, 70, another five years outside and then i stuffed it on the hill right there there's a hood for it we'll go take a walk over there and take a look at it actually that, that don't no we won't do that because this video is just going to take too long it's just a hood it's all broken it's all smashed i'll show you where it was supposed to attach and that's right here. <laughs> that's supposed to have a hood on it. You can see still some plastic in there. Sat up on a hill until yesterday. Today is April 2nd, 2022. We're going to put this old girl to work again. She's still got a good engine on it. These these are really good engines. I've had a lot of good luck with them. And, I, and I've fixed a lot of these engines for customers that were absolutely ancient and been in their family for decades doing all kinds, you know, probably had 4,000 hours on it and they're, and they're still running. So they're pretty, pretty good engines. And, you know, that's the ones that took care of them. You neglect oil changes and air filter changes and, you know, doesn't matter what you got, they're going to wear out. Anyways, so that's the story with this. We're going to get on this carburetor. I'm going to end up taking this off. I, I still have the deck for it. Thankfully, the deck has been inside in my storage for this whole amount of time that I've been yapping to you about almost 10 years. So that's a good thing. Uh, I mean, I'm actually shocked and amazed that this thing hasn't rusted out. You know, most of them rust out and the paint blows off. But this is this is a really well built unit. I'm impressed, beyond impressed with this thing. You know, look at the throttle still works. All that time it sat here untouched. You know, granted the starter seized up and the, the other switch failed, but I mean the rest of it is. You know, the tires are still holding it. I think I got tubes in a lot of these, though. Yeah, this one's got a tube in it. I don't know about the other side. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get this carburetor. We want to get this thing running. That's the name of this game. So so we've already been under the cover. I, I put some uh, protective coating on the wire here, and I put some uh, liquid electrical tape on the top of the secondary wire here because it was all chewed by mice. So we got nice spark. I was just kind of reviewing my footage. I, get, I have a tendency to ramble, not think... 
So the whole bottom line of this thing being sitting outside, what I did was I started right from the beginning, which is a battery. I took both cables off, sanded both ends down, got down to the solenoid, you know, sanded all that down. I got my wire wheel on the little tiny wire wheel on the Dremel down there and buzzed up all the connections on that, the, the uh, primary connection and both secondary connections and, and the uh, 12 volt tap in there with the fuse we cleaned all that up clean the connection on the starter of course we've got a new uh, switch in there so all the electrical contacts are good so so this is where we're at at the carburetor wing nut from when they used to make wing nuts i don't see these anymore because they don't want you working on the stuff is what i'm getting that's the vibe that all the manufacturers have given off to me is they don't want us working on nothing they want us helpless Oh, look, a gift. Oh, his legs are coming off. Yummy. Stink bug. Oh, what have we got here? Some type of bug. It's like a giant mosquito of some sort. This has got to be blown out because all the crap that I was blowing out of here all got stuck in the filter. So, here we go. Oh, that was easy. Here we got a little hose attached right here. Boop. It's just a breather. Uh, so when you put on full choke, this is all that happens. It's just an arm that comes up. This is your choke. And then that arm just shoves it in. That's it. It's very simple. Right? Boop. And that puts the choke on. Pull it back. That's closed throttle. That's full throttle. And this is choke. Because just that little extra notch all the way up top with the throttle lever. So that's that. That's about the easiest. See, that's, this is what I mean about older stuff, you know. The, Simple to work. Look at the carbs already off. I can pull it off. You know, I just got to disconnect all this uh, Happy stuff, which is in and of itself pretty simple too As I struggle And I can't work on one thing more than one thing at the same time Or otherwise I have my tools everywhere and I can't find anything. Okay, so there's a Get that out of there Get this little spring out of there now we can go all the way back maybe see if they put a little cut in the corner of this thing that would have been a lot easier well not everything's 100 percent easy but it's easier than the newer stuff i mean i'm already at the carburetor which is half the battle some of the some of the new crap there we go okay so once you get it off now you can just do one of those bam so what i'm gonna do now is uh check and see how the sparky situation is uh gonna do i'm gonna spray some uh, acetone in the intake here and uh i know it's got good compression uh, you know, it's a uh, good, good spark. So should, there's no reason why it shouldn't light off. Now, when you're doing this, you, you just keep in mind, this is unrestricted. This is basically wide open. There's no throttle control here. So however much fuel you get it, it's also ungoverned. So if you get her spinning fast enough, she'll float the valves. I got to show you my handy dandy starting switch. That's how you started. That was, this was a limit switch off of oil furnace. <laughs> it ended up working out perfect because I had a little push button on the dash, but that, of course, rusted out from being outside for nine years. So this is a good way to check for spark compression and uh, spark and compression all in one shot. So if, if you if you got a machine that doesn't run and you do this and it fires up, it didn't fire up before, you know you got a fuel problem because you got spark and compression. That's the only thing left, fuel and air. As long as your air filter is clean. And it runs. So that's simple as that. Wow, what a smoky mess I just made. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of oil in that cylinder. The thing's kind of over full with oil. It's kind of a good thing because I think that kept the uh, cylinder from rusting. So this was built in a time when manufacturers actually gave a crap about the people who had to work on these things. Look how, look at the space. See the space? Look at fit. You can fit any wrench in here. Now go take a look at your modern stuff and see how much space they give you. That should tell you everything you need to know right there. I'm curious to see what we find in here. 
Huh, it's actually not as bad as I thought. A little rusty and dusty, but... A little plunger works. We're going to have to test that out. I don't know why this is stuck in here. This should come right out of here. Shouldn't be threaded in there. Yeah, see? Really tight. Hasn't been off in a while. So I, I just want to uh, ground this thing here. I just want to see if this thing works. This plunger should pull in. This is a fuel cutoff solenoid. So what this does, when you're running, this is the way it's at, and your main jet is free to dump fuel into the engine. And as soon as you turn the key off, it pops back up, blocks the main jet, kills the fuel to the engine. So it's supposed to stop that big backfire, and we all know how good of a job it does at that. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things, shutting off a mower, boom, and all the neighbors laugh. Anyways, that can't blow up your muffler. I've seen that more than once. It splits the muffler wide open. you got to weld it back together. Of course, I had to get the biggest battery in the friggin' place. I had this nice little tiny gel battery that was for alarm systems. It would have been perfect for this. No idea where it went. I decided to move it the other day. So this is the positive end. So I'm going to ground it here. Of course, it's far enough away from you where you can't see it. And it worked once. And that's it. <laughs> Is it dead? <laughs> what happened? Well, better to figure it out. Oh, there it goes. It's got a bad ground or something. A bad connection. Ah, oh, I got a bad connection on this. Let me get a wire brush. Okay, let's try that out again. Yeah, that's all this. Now it's consistently working. I'm just going to probably stick my Dremel in here clean that up. Since the pin has fallen out already, we'll uh, pull the pin out. And I'll pull the float and the needle. Needle's hanging on by a thread. There we go. It just, just rests in there. Pretty simple. Clean all that off. Needle looks like it's in good shape. I can't remember if I replaced this or not. I probably didn't. You can see it's... <clears throat> you see all the evidence of it sitting, but you can tell the last time it did sit, didn't they did drain the fuel out as best they could. Ooh, hey, we got somebody here. What are you doing? It's that time of year. It's only 45 degrees out. All the little critters are coming back to life. So this actually has jets. There's one way down inside that you probably can't see. And then there's the jet on the side. I, I'm not well versed on the terminology of these things i just know i gotta get them out of here and clean them probably doesn't need it but we'll take it apart anyway just so you guys can see the wonder that is old school carburation very well built it's a walbro carburetor specially modified uh, screwdriver for getting down in here i had to grind the edges off to get rid of the wide hips on the normal uh, screwdrivers Make them kind of straight. Oh boy, that thing's in there. Thing's getting mangled. Damn. The screwdriver. I need something thicker. I just touched up the screwdriver on the bench grinder. We'll see if that's a little better. I think this jet has pretty much had it. <laughs> the struggle is real. You know what? <laughs> We're not gonna take this out of here. I'm done. It's just, it doesn't really need it. And we're just risking too much damage to try to get it out of this. So it's going to stay where it's at. We'll just blow through it. Oh, I was holding it the wrong way. <laughs> like, where's all the air passageways? Oh, that hurt. That's one good thing about the tree hugger movement. Stuff don't burn like it used to. <laughs> old carburetor cleaner man you get that stuff in your eyes whoo you you were done for the day like ruined your vision <laughs> there's my other modified screwdriver half one half oops one and a half yeah about one and a half gotta love it when none of your tools work right that's pretty clean but we're going to go ahead and go through here anyway. Of course, it goes straight through. 
See if I can block that off with my finger and try to force it through the other passageways. It's coming right back at me. Seems like this uh, air passageway is pretty clogged up. Well, maybe not. It's coming up. I just hit this with the Scotch Bright. We got a pile of goodies in there. And one thing I'm gonna do, probably why I wheel this at the threads, just to make sure this thing has a good ground so it works when it's supposed to work. Yeah, so it's a little bit better than it was. That'll be fine. And yeah, just clean that up. I remember now this thing was a ball of rust when I first when we first got the machine. And I just uh wire wheeled it with the little Dremel and uh the thing came out mint. I mean it's been that way ever since. So the days of replacing things just to make them new again is off the table because uh the stuff that's out there today, it's all Chinese, it's ninety percent of it's garbage. So you gotta really be careful you're better off keeping the oe stuff especially on something from the early 90s and back you're better off keeping those parts whenever you can keeping them stock so i got a few other things i want to do here but i want to get this on first oh forgot to put that little i always got to remember some of these have this some of these don't but oh, first i gotta see yeah things wide open nice and clear see light through it no problem so that'll run. Man, these screwdrivers. Every screwdriver I own is a piece of crap. One thing I like to do is the, the puff test. It looks like I'm smoking a crack pipe, but you blow on it this way. When it's upside down, you shouldn't move any air. Then when you flip it around, you should move air through it. So that's free and clear. That's sealed, so... So that's a good thing. And the solenoid went where? Anybody see where that walked off to? Seriously? Oh my lord, here we go. Ugh. Can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Texting two people at the same time, shooting a video, cleaning a carburetor. And I left this thing sitting in my toolbox. I couldn't find it for 10 minutes. But I cleaned it all up. Just gonna give it a little blow here. That looks to me like a runner. Actually, you know what? Before I put this on, I'm gonna take this uh, screw out of here just to make sure this is all set inside. There she is. Yeah, we'll clean that up. It's actually not that dirty. It's not dirty at all. It's got nothing. Let me uh, spray through it, see if that hole's open. Clean as a wish hole. Oh, so I'm going to lose that pin. What is that coming out of? Yeah, it's coming right out of the main jet. Whew, this stuff is cold. Knocks about 30 degrees off the ambient temperature, and it's already 40, so it's not very pleasant. That's actually probably 50 by now. <clears throat> it's warming up. Not warm enough for me, though. I like 80s. 85. If it could be 85 every day, man, that would be one happy SOB. All right, that's tight. That set screw in in a minute. Or a low speed screw, I should say. <clears throat> Can't even tell if I'm on camera or not. I probably just did all that off camera. <laughs> I suck at this video thing. All right, that's tight. Now we can put our little. Did I clean the screw? What the hell's a screw? Man. See how things disappear on me? <clears throat> okay, clean that off. And my shirt, I've got lint and cat hair in it. Half, one, half. Richer is better, usually. Okay, choke. Make sure we get this facing the right way. This thing doesn't want to close. 
cooperate. Okay, you gotta give it a little squeeze to fit in that hole. See, this will come right out of there. Do you remember which hole it was in? I think it was this one. Come on, water. It's gotta go up from the top. I guess it don't really matter. Make sure you get this going on in the correct direction. Fifth time I've cleaned this carburetor. The last ten years, ow. Kinda hurt. I kind of bent this a little bit. There we go. Bend that back. Get the little hook back on here. All right. What the heck is going on now? There we go. Okay. This is usually easy to do with needle nose pliers. Of course, I love doing things the hard way. That hooked in, that's all working. That joke still works. Beauteous. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this thing out. All right, look how pretty that is. Clean, cleaned up pretty good. Put that breather back in. Surprised that breather's not stiff as a board. It's actually pretty, pretty supple. Hardware. So this thing should run. Well, once I get gas. <laughs> I gotta clean out the gas tank. I gotta make a fuel line because the old fuel line actually fell off it before I even touched it. It was laying right down here with the fuel filter and everything still attached. The fuel filter was one of the metal ones, one of the automotive ones. I, I used to use those a lot, small automotive ones. And, uh, it sounded like a rattle, so that thing was junk. So we got rid of that. Tighten this back up. See how easy that was? The 90s. The 90s is the last of the good ones. And it's kind of the same with cars, too. 19, 1994 seems to be the model year that... The last real good, trouble-free, and simple, easy to work on model. But I digress. So I've already shown this in other videos. I'll probably dump about, I don't know, eight ounces of acetone in here, shake the hell out of it, and dump it out, and that'll be good. And then uh, then we gotta figure out what size uh, line that was, because I don't remember now. <laughs> but we got a little tool for that. Which comes in kind of handy. They get these in the mail for free, or I used to, from some handyman. I don't know how these people get your information. Probably from entering something stupid on the internet, but yeah, five sixteenths too small. It's three eighths. Looks to be three eighths. So I like to use uh, Tigon or Versalon. Used to be, they keep changing the name of this crap. I can't keep track of it. That's Versalon. That's uh, too small. That's one eighth inch. That's that stuff's tiny. But uh, I'll show you what it looks like. It's it's a uh, it's a clear tubing. Yeah, like this stuff right here. Well, this this is a little bit bigger. Bigger OD. This is old, so it's got a kind of a yellow hue to it. But man, this stuff is. There's nothing better for uh, dealing with ethanol gasoline. Unless they change the formulation, I don't know. See, this uh, see, this is Tigathane. That's the formulation I used to use, C210A. If you can find, if they still make the C210A, that's the best of the best. It'll literally last forever, even submerged in gasoline. So you can use it on uh, weed whacker gas tanks where the, you know, you got the little uh, filter that sits in the bottom of the tank, that little section of hose that stays in the gas 24-7. It'll last forever. So, yeah, that's the good stuff. This is the fuel filter I'm going to be using. Stens. 
it only fits Kohler and that's it. Just kidding. It's universal, it fits anything. It's got even got two different nipples on the end. So you can fit really, really small line or normal size line. I'll probably snip that uh, small one off and drill it out a little bit just so we get full flow through this thing. I use, I like the clear ones and, and it's big enough to where it, it's got enough capacity for this little guy. <clears throat> It's good to change them once a year, but you know, you can, if the thing looks good at the end of the year, it's probably gonna be good for a couple of years. Sometimes these like to delaminate inside after a certain amount of time, but just keep an eye on it, that's all. So I went into my stash and found a big, big roll of uh, Tigathane C210A. It used to be called Tigon, then they changed it to Tigathane. Now you got Versalon. I'm not, I don't have too much experience with the Versalon stuff. That's relatively new to me. So I don't know how that stuff holds up. This stuff I have tested a million different ways. I have this line in my RD350 that I built 11 years ago, and it's still holding up in there on my oil injection lines. So pretty important part of the machine. So I just got to kind of, I got to clean the gas tank, put the gas tank back in. I got to kind of, eyeball how much line I'm gonna need and then do a snippy snip in the middle put that filter in so ran into a little setback here during the uh, cleaning with the acetone that's also another good reason for doing this putting acetone or any kind of liquid in here so you can see what what the deal is I had uh, leakage all down in here I don't know if you can see that but we have UV damage in the form of a gigantic crack. Now, what do you do here? Tank that's built in 1994. You're probably not going to find one of these. You might, but what's it going to cost you? That's the that's the main thing. I'll tell you what this is going to cost me. It's going to cost me nothing because I'm going to weld this closed. So this is not only a carb cleaning video. It's going to be a plastic welding video too. There's a couple different ways I do I can do it. Um, I could just heat this up and smear the stuff around, get it nice and hot, get, make sure the heat penetrates in. You know, you don't want to get it on fire so it burns, but you want to get it hot enough to where it permeates through but doesn't get so hot that it sags and drops. So it's kind of a fine line there. Looks like, man, I got cracks going all different directions here. I just noticed. I better mark these with a marker so I get them all. But, but anyways, uh, yeah, so you can kind of smear the stuff around, but I've got a little bit of a better idea. I bought this years ago for fixing ATV plastic. It's a little, uh, I got it all wrapped up, but it's a little uh, soldering iron. See, it's got a little foot on the end of it. See a little hole on the top. And through that little hole, you can feed these little, uh, what is this? Polyethylene, I believe, high density polyethylene. If I'm not mistaken, that, that, that would make the most sense to me because it's a pretty hard plastic. But, uh, yeah, there's the is the the label for it. I bought this years ago. I can't believe I saved this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it is polyethylene. See, I was right. So it's got a little 42 watt heating element. Comes with 15 feet of rod. I think I bought a little bit extra urethane supply. I don't even know if this place is in business anymore because this I bought this probably 2004. So it gives you directions. Yeah, lo most ATV, oh, I didn't know that. They're made out of low density polyethylene. So this is low density, okay, low density. It's not high density. The high density stuff is pretty hard. Uh, I, I, now I kind of understand, yeah, low density is probably a little bit more flexy, not as prone to break even though it does still break. You can reinforce the repair with stainless steel mesh. That's a good idea. See, and they, they show you where you uh, cut like a little V in it with the thing. I've never done that. I, I usually just get it real hot. I get You gotta get the surface really hot first and then start feeding this stuff in. It'll all kind of bond together. That's the key. All right, so that's what it looks like. I just plugged her in. She's heating up, and I'm going to need two hands for this, of course. You're just going to kind of smooth it around, feed that stuff in. I like to lay it on thick, you know, go all down in here. See, this is what happens to plastic when you leave it out in the sun, because this sat out there with no hood on it, and this is a side that was facing the sun, so if it had sat another 
couple of years, you would have been able to put your finger through it. You know, there would have been no structural rigidity left in it. It would have been super brittle. So there's another couple of tricks I use. I usually heat this up with the big torch, get it red hot, and then you can use it to kind of smear stuff around. But I'm probably, yeah, I'll probably use this to touch it up afterwards. I'm going to use the soldering iron first. That thing's starting to smoke and it's just about ready. So I'm going to start heating this up. Now, one thing... You start introducing a flame. Even if you dry all the gas out of here, this stuff is porous. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna be in for a surprise if you put an open flame up, up in the front here. So you use your own judgment. But when I have a tank that was, that just had gasoline in it recently, this, this has been dry for so long. There's no danger whatsoever. I'll even show you. See, there's nothing's gonna burn in there. It's totally, you can't smell any fumes in there. They're all gone decayed disintegrated or whatever but uh you could fill this up with water you can let it soak overnight you can dump it out and if you put a flame to the top of that it's gonna it's gonna ignite on you so just <laughs> just to let you know and it and it, it makes a woo sound like that and it, a blue flame comes out it'll hurt you it'll you know it'll take the hair off your arm if you're not expecting it and you're close to it or if you got something you got a can of brake clean like i got two feet away from it we should probably move this be smart about things. You know, you just got to be mindful of uh, stuff that can burn, you know, that's all. So I'm going to preheat this, get this all nice and gooey. You can see that melts immediately. I can see it. This is just a little butane torch I use for uh, heat shrinking. I'm going to go a little bit past where all these cracks are going out. See, I want the heat to get in there. This thing's smoking and it's going right in my mouth. You don't want to be breathing in plastic fumes. They are not good for you at all. Oop. Got that a little too hot there. You see it start changing color. You don't want that. Start, see those little brown spots? I got a little too hot. Kind of keeping my hands nearby so I can get an idea how much heat I'm throwing out. And it's, it's throwing out a lot more than I expected, uh, even at this distance. So it has the year in there. Ordinarily, I like to preserve stuff like that, but this is a, I got to have this tank leak free, you know. I'm willing to sacrifice the year, and it doesn't tell me anything anyway, because it's pointing at both a 6 and a 2, so it's either a 92 or a 96. If I were a betting man, I'd say it's a probably 92. There's probably a standardized way, see now that's starting to get translucent, so it's getting a little hot, a little too hot. There's probably a standardized way of uh, looking at it. You know, whether they reference it from the top of the box. I don't know how they do it, so... Anyways, so that's probably good. And my torch doesn't shut off, of course. Oop, I won't get that too hot. Put that there. And what a huge pain in the ass. The camera died right in the middle of this. Of course, mission critical operation. Thing's gonna croak. So I had to flip this around because I had it so hot it started to cave in, made a little hole there. But I gotta get some more heat on here. You don't wanna turn it brown, you just wanna get it hot. Something that I care what it looks like. <laughs> I would ask a customer before I went and did a butcher job like this, you know. I'm I'm of the school, if it works, perfect. I don't care what it looks like, I just want it to work. So that's where I'm at with this. So it's starting to cave in a little bit there. So we'll fill this in. And it can never go too heavy on this stuff. It's gonna run out of uh, material here. You don't wanna touch the top of this, it hurts a little. Yeah, that's a little, <laughs> that's a little hot. Come on, baby. You know what I mean? That's an entire stick. I'm just gonna hold it like this so stuff doesn't sag out of there. Oop, as I put a hole on the other side of it. <laughs> Gotta watch where you put your stuff. Yeah, you don't wanna go using a big torch here because it'll make it pretty droopy pretty quickly. And I'm running out of gas. Always at the perfect time. Okay. Trying to get an idea how hot this is. We'll test this out with more acetone afterwards. I like using acetone because it evaporates fast. Like you can use water too, but 
now you got to follow up with acetone to absorb the water and get it out of the fuel system before you run whatever you're running. It's good to have a good feel for this stuff, you know, because you can, uh, I could jam this right through if I wanted, very simply. <coughs> that stuff reeks. Breathe that in, ain't good for you. I'm trying to stay upwind of the smoke. Usually the more time you spend kind of working it, the worse it'll make it, but this right here looks like it's split wide open. We're gonna have to get another uh, another tube in here. Now that it's cooling down, it's starting to pull that apart. Yeah, I'm gonna clean this. this is, it's been hanging around. It's picked up stain from transmission fluid and everything else. So I don't know how critical that is that it needs to be clean, but I would imagine it makes for a better bond if you got pure plastic rather than contaminated crap. I'm laying it on thick right here. Yeah, not my prettiest work, but as long as it holds, that's all we care about. I like keeping this hot for as long as possible, so I'm sure it works its way in, you know? It's like the consistency of silly putty, if you remember what that felt like. It definitely isn't pretty. I don't care. Don't care, don't care. Yeah, it's extremely hot there. All right, I'm going to let this cool down, and once it's cool, we'll fill it up with some liquids. All right, so we got a little nipple on the bottom there. We're gonna dump a little of this in there. Stuff costs money, so I don't want to go too crazy with it. Put the cap on. So obviously we got no leaks down below. We got no leaks over here. I don't know how well this cap seals. I think it vents out of the cap. So that said, it'll probably pee out of the cap if I tilt it that way. This is still kind of warm. I didn't really want to shock cool it, you know, make it brittle. I don't know if that's a thing with plastics or not. If you can shock cool them and make them brittle. I found another spot off camera up here that looked kind of sketchy. So I just kind of went over it with solder and iron in the foot there. So let's see if we fix this. It's better than it was, that's for sure. I think we might have got it all. What the heck did I get in my hand? Touched something I wasn't supposed to. Yeah, I think we fixed that. From the looks of things. Yep, pours right out of the cap. I kind of figured that was going to happen. So we know not to fill this thing to the brim. I don't even think this is the correct... Oh, man. Yeah, this cap is destroyed. Yikes. Look at that friggin gasket in there. Didn't like the acetone too much. Try to get some pressure in it. Yeah, I don't see the slightest hint of, of a leak out of there. It's all 100% dry. Beautiful. Saved another one. So I got the gaskets out. That one's pretty much done for. I think the acetone melted it to be honest with you. That's, I've never seen that happen before. It's got to be Chinese rubber, for sure. This one here is blown in half, so I think I'm going to super glue it together. Fixed it. All right, I got it back in there. I actually had to stretch it to get it in there, and the uh, the super glue held. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <clears throat> it's just a matter of uh, getting this cap back on here. It doesn't really fit correctly. Maybe I need to just hog it down. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I'm damned. Unless we can go far enough. Oh, no, oh, it's better than it was. That came out of the top. Let me blow that off real quick before it melts it again. Doesn't like acetone. So that's a good deal for the tank. So we save that. You don't have to be an economic scholar to see what is happening in the world and that we're not on the right track and could be in for some hard financial times like uh, we're not used to seeing. We've had it pretty damn good here in America for the past 70, 80, 90, 100 years, 200 years if I'm honest. It's human nature to keep meddling with things and screwing them up. That's a whole separate subject, but us little guys out here, we got to do what we got to do to survive, you know? You know, don't be so quick to scrap your old uh, equipment. You know, you might look at it, it's going to be a lot of work, but there might come a time where we're not going to be able to buy things. 
we're already halfway there right now. You know, there's things you can do to keep this stuff going. You don't need a million dollars to uh, mow your lawn or get to work, drive places. You can keep your equipment running, you know. This is one of the ways. Plastic is weldable. Most plastics are. There are some that when you get them hot, it totally destroys them. And that tends to be the type of plastics, surprise, surprise, that they use today. Stuff that you can't fix. Back in the day, everything was fixable. Like you could take a power window switch out of an old car. I say old to me, you know, 1950s, 60s. Uh, you could take it apart even in the 90s, in an early 90s Volvo 940 and polish up the contacts. If it's not working, you could bend things to make it a little stiffer to operate, you know, has a little better feel to it. You can do stuff like that. Try that on a 2022. There's nothing, everything's throwaway. There's nothing you can fix. I don't know, you know, as uh, I've seen a lot in my life to make me believe that this is being done on purpose. They're, they're squeezing us. I don't know what their end game is. You know, when it comes right down to a human nature is control. Everybody wants to not everybody, I'm going to say these people that are in charge of the world today, they want to control everybody. It's a, it's a sickness. I have no desire to control anybody. Why, why would you got to be a twisted, demented piece of garbage to want to control somebody? Why would you want to do that? I don't know. I'm not getting into the psychology of that, but us little guys out here trying to survive, we're bearing the brunt of all the stuff these morons are doing. They think they're saving the planet or whatever stupid idea they have. They take it upon themselves to play God, and uh, we're all paying the price for it. It's not right. It was never right. Our founding fathers here in America knew it wasn't right, and that's why they threw off the government that they had at that time. I'm not going to say too much about that because, just because. Continuing on with this thing, if we get fuel in here, this thing's going to run, so... Uh, I gotta wrestle with that uh, fuel tank and get those little tabs on the side to kind of sit in here. It's, there's, I'm not gonna film that because it's, uh, I don't think there's any value in it. Anyways, let's get this thing going. So I put this tank in and it was, man, it was loose. It was weeble wobbling and shaking all over the place. I got it pretty snug now. I put these little pieces of uh, kind of like a high density foam wherever I could and uh, that tightened it up nice. So when we're bouncing around on the hill there, mowing over rocks, it's not gonna destroy the gas tank and crack it again. So I, this is just a little piece of packing material. I just use a knife and cut it like a cake <laughs> in layers. You know, you can kind of follow the lines and the seams there. And uh, this came with something that got shipped to me. I don't remember what. I, these are the types of things you got to think about nowadays, you know. We got to start thinking like our uh, parents and grandparents and great-grandparents did, you know, in the 1920s during the Depression late 20s they used to save everything because you never know when you're going to need it and that's kind of the mindset i've had my whole life if you if you haven't noticed like i'm kind of a hoarder here i got crap everywhere you know i don't know why i'm like this but i i i don't like throwing stuff away i like having stuff on hand so i don't have to drive anywhere to go get it so i buy in bulk whenever i can and i use stuff that's laying around whatever i can because it, it makes my life easier and and it's easier on the wallet and then i can do stupid stuff to my truck like make it have 550 horsepower that's why i started working on things when i was younger because i didn't have the money to pay anybody that's how it all started you know i don't know how my career would have turned out had i had stuff as difficult to work on as the modern things are, like, you know, from 2015 on up, well, actually, even before that, 2010 on up, lawn equipment, cars, man, they are a pain in the neck. We had it so easy back in the day. You know, people didn't work on their stuff back then because they didn't, they didn't have to, you know. They had money. They, they'd buy a new car every three years. Every working man could do that, you know, every three to five years. Boy, things ain't like that anymore. It's getting getting crazy out there but, but there's always something you can do to get by you know like these tires these tires should have been thrown away years ago look at the look at the weather checking in there well how do you fix that put a tube in it you know this one here i believe you know this got a tube in it too look at the cracks in this thing you, there's no way this would hold there <laughs> this one's been facing the sun the whole time sun 
that's uh, that, that that was my whole point that of uh, making your stuff last. <clears throat> so if you if you if we're gonna be going through tough times, you want to make your stuff last. And the key to that is keeping rubber and plastic out of sunlight. Rubber and plastic they don't like heat. They don't like UV. It'll destroy it. Good example of that is go to Phoenix, Arizona. You will find cars that are 60, 70 years old, still original, original paint and everything. They're all faded. The paint's burned right off the car. The metal is beautiful because they don't drive them through road salt like we do up here. They don't have to deal with snow and ice and all that crap. But what does go to hell out there is rubber, like uh, weather stripping and... Uh, I can count on one hand the number of bad decisions I've made in my life. I haven't been pretty good about that. GoPro is one of them. This thing, for the amount of money I paid for it, I have had more problems with this stupid-ass camera. Anyways, I don't even remember where I was going. I was talking about UV and uh, rubber and plastic and all that stuff, you know. So you want to make your stuff last, that means... You're going to have to start taking care of your stuff. Keep it inside if it's small enough. <laughs> Any way you can to get it in a structure. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Like I got no insulation in here. I mean, this costs a lot of money. Don't, don't get me wrong. But you don't need something this big. You only need, I mean, how much space does it take? Look at all the mowers I got in this one little space here and an air conditioner. I mean, it's just uh, if you want to keep your uh, lawn equipment and stuff, you know, that's probably not going to be a priority if if we're in severe times, you, you, you're struggling to get something to eat. The last thing you're thinking about is mowing your stupid lawn. But, you know, you, you don't want your whole land to turn into a forest either. So, so you're probably going to need it, you know, to plant food and stuff. And it goes for anything, you know, diesel tractors, uh, anything with an engine. You know, it's all got rubber, a lot of everything today. Anything's somewhat modern has plastic in it. it some point in it uh, plastic gas tanks plastic fans plastic covers the wiring's coated in plastic so that's something you've got to think about too you, that stuff sees the sun it's going to break down and turn to crap so it's all about making it last we're almost there we're in the home stretch here so i'm gonna so we just gotta go i'm gonna go from there to there connect those two nipples together without having it sit here and rub or sit here and rub See, they they put a nice little uh, chamfer in the metal there, which is nice. So it has less chance. There's things you can do there too. I mean, you can put a, you can get another bigger hose and line the outside of it. You can wrap it in electrical tape. There's a lot of things you can do to keep it from from rubbing. You know, that's the key to making things last too. Pay attention. You know, just throw stuff together. Pay attention to how this stuff's gonna sit. You know, you don't want wires anywhere hot. You know, you don't want. It. I mean, this is the intake. This is the coolest side of the engine, but on the opposite side, you got the exhaust right there and the spark plug wire is that close to it. So you want to, well, you want to maximize the air gap there to keep heat away from it and stuff like that and doing stuff like this you know reusing old uh, switches you know there's no need to go out and buy a key switch i'm sure i could and plug it in just like it was from the factory and why you know why spend the money and uh, there might come a time when you might not be able to get it even if you have the money you know so and that's something i kept in my drawer for years and years and was like why am i keeping this stupid thing 15 years down the road i found a use for it <laughs> you know that's how it goes so you, you gotta start thinking a little different if uh if we're smart about things here you know we uh want to keep this country going because uh love it or hate it we're the last best hope on the face of the earth so you don't see people leaving here and going to other countries. Everybody's coming from all over the world and coming here, and there's a reason for that. So we want to keep that alive and well. Just connect the line right up to the uh, gas tank. I want to put the fuel filter as far away from any heat and moving things as possible, so I'm thinking I'm going to snip snip right here and uh, install that fuel filter. Man, I am losing my mind here. I thought I had this thing out and I put it away. This is a tubing cutter. These things are great, usually, with weaker with weaker hose. <laughs> that one took a few tries. That goes to show you how good this stuff is. Look how thick it is, too. It's got a good wall to it. So that's going to last a good long time. Even if, even if it is rubbing up against something, it's going to last 100 times longer than uh, most other things would. I just want to see how this fits in here. 
Okay, that's going to fit pretty good. So I'm just going to snip these off, and I'm going to I'm just going to run a little drill bit in here and blow all the little plastic chunks out of there. Yeah, in hindsight, it was probably better just to leave well enough alone, but but I'm happy with that. That'll work. It's kind of a pain in the neck. Anyways, yeah, and make sure we got it going the right way. Filter always points to the fuel source. And if you can't see through it, there's usually an arrow or something that tells you which way it goes. Hook this up here. Oh no, it's kind of sloppy. Crap. Ah, I hate that. Two different size things. Well, we can put a clamp on there. Or another trick is we could get some smaller hose, slide it on there, and then slide this over the top of the hose. That's another trick. I mean, that actually is a better idea than trying to zip tie it. All right, so I've cut a piece of quarter inch Versalon C210A off of another roll that I had. And let's see, that fits nice. Okay, that's it. So now there's your adapter. And we'll stretch that on there. Look at that, perfect. Like a glove. Little tricks of the trade. Let's see how much we're gonna need here. Uh, probably cut it right about there. I like using these. These are specially made uh, tubing cutters. X5 PC, I think it says. Yeah, it's some strong stuff, I'll tell you. Takes a little while to get through it, even with that snipper. Okay, there you go. Fuel lines hooked up. Oh, you know what I want to do is uh, I want to put a shutoff switch on this thing. So we're going to make another cut somewhere, maybe above here. You know, either that or I'll just put ethanol-free fuel in there. We can do that too. That'll last forever. Going to only use this thing maybe five times a season, so then it's going to sit all winter. So ethanol-free is probably the wise choice. Not the cheapest choice, but it's the wise choice. If I don't want to deal with trouble, we could just put a fuel shutoff switch in and run the cheap stuff. That's my line of thinking. I have a feeling we're going to run into the same issue with this as we did with the other one. Uh, it's a little snugger, if that's a word. I think I can get away with putting uh, spring clamps on there. There's another thing I save. Every piece of equipment I work on, if it ends up getting scrapped or something gets replaced, I save all the old spring clamps. And of course, I got some new ones here. All right. <laughs> We're gonna push her outside because she's gonna smoke like a freight train. I have this feeling, as we saw. Oh, forgot my tools. And I forgot to put the quick shot in. <laughs> we should probably do that now. All right, so some things to think about here is we don't know if this belt's gonna just explode the minute I put a load on it. It might, but either way. Oh, I definitely need some lube. <laughs> Another time we'll do that. So we got full choke. Power on. Hit the start button. Oop, almost. What's up with that? Something's not happy. That's another thing I'm amazed about is the seat. Oh, it's it's not all blown out. It's a pretty heavy duty seat. Look how much water's in there. I would have just got soaked. So we got this going on. I just pulled the wire off and the whole stupid thing came off with it. So, well, we don't really need any of that to do a spark test. Although I would like the wire to be over here so I can see it. So I gotta hold the brake in somehow. Okay, I got the test light hooked up. What is happening here? Now yeah, we got no spark. We did until it ran for a second. That tells me the uh, kill wire probably got wrapped up in the fan. Ah, that sucks. I don't feel like dealing with that right now. We might pick this up another day. Okay, we're back, we're back. It's many, many days later. I just extracted a coil out of one of my uh, junk piece of equipment on the hill here. And I believe I might have done that prematurely. 
because uh, I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit here. All right. Yeah, it's even got a number on it. So I should probably show you what we're working on. So, so that'll make sense. It's a model uh, 2800 series. This GoPro camera kind of sucks, but it's 287707. And it's a uh, type 0225-01. And then there's a code. So I hooked up my, uh, I got a power probe Maestro and I stuck it in here and I had a ground and I flipped the switch that I had hooked up to the, to power the uh, solenoid on the carburetor there. <clears throat> I still had a ground there. So there's a short circuit in this wire somewhere. And I believe that was the whole problem all along. I, I'm kind of doing this for nothing, but if this doesn't work, at least I'll know this coil's junk and I can throw it aside. Well, throw it away. <laughs> but if it's good, I can put it aside or put the other one aside and keep that one for a spare. Figured I'd show this since uh, I don't think I've ever shown this on my channel anyway. There's plenty of videos out there, I'm sure. This is just the way I do it. I, so I got two feeler gauges and the and the spec is uh, 0 0.010 to 0 0.014, 010 to 014 inches, that is. And you can see 0.012 is 0 0.305 millimeters for you guys across the pond or up north, this side out. Is that what it says? Yeah, yeah, so it's marked this side out. So it's polarity sensitive is what that means. So what I do, I get the feel of, this is kind of a pain in the ass. There's probably easier ways of doing this, but I stick both feel of gauges in there so I don't have to try to jam them in there, you know? And uh, boy, if I could find the bolts, that would be nice. I wonder what happened to those. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is gonna go down. I am so unorganized. There we go. Get that out of my way. So I'm kinda, this is like an 18 hand job. Be juggling 800 things at the same time. I don't really even have this lined up right. There you go. Oop. All right. Okay, there's that one. So we both feel pretty good in there, so I'm gonna hog it down. Not hog it down, but literally, but snug it up, I should say. These are bolts that you don't really wanna go cranking on because they're not very big. So as long as Sometimes you get a little drag on the feeler gauge. It doesn't have to be super precise because you get a little wiggle room there. See, this one's a little tight on the 012, but it's tight on one side, loop kind of looser on the other, but that's why I go 012 instead of 014. If you go somewhere in the middle, it ends up pretty good. I went a little towards the closer side because I had a feeling that was gonna happen. I've had that happen before where one side ends up looser than the other. So I don't wanna go right to the end of the spec. But no matter what you do, it's gonna run. As long as you got that gap reasonably close, it's gonna run, it's gonna spark. So what I'm gonna do now, we gotta do a little spark check here. I didn't hook this up for a reason because I just want to test the coil. I don't care about the kill switch quite yet. I'm gonna, we're gonna deal with that later. There's so much power in a sparking device. A good ground isn't super critical. This is kind of another 15 hand job. And now you can't see nothing. You know what I'm gonna do? Try to roll it sleeve up here if I can. Okay. Oh, we got some mud in there. <laughs> mud bugs. <laughs> yeah, they love holes for some reason. Hope they can get this before it moves out of the way on you. <sighs> Boy, my legs don't bend like they used to. Can you? Are you still in the frame here? Where are you? Right on the edge. Maybe we'll shock the camera. Nice healthy spark there. That's a good coil. That's a good sign. All right, now I'm gonna hook up the kill wire here, if it'll reach. <laughs> hook this up and if uh, we don't get the same result, we gotta, I already know we got a problem with this circuit. I just need to find where the short is. 
And if I can't find it, I'm just going to run a new wire. But for now, let's see if I can't get this thing in here. It does not want to cooperate. Ah, come on now. All right, that's on there. All right, so that thing's right here. Okay, it's totally dead. So, we have a short circuit. Where? I don't know quite yet. So you see that plug plugs in there. The wire runs down here. There's plenty of places for it to uh, short out. For sure, there's a lot of sharp metal in here. Could be any one of these. And it doesn't take much. When you, when you got a little bit of voltage, the slightest little little hole will, uh, and you can see the wire down there. You see it in the back, that black wire moving around. That's the kill wire. It goes under the engine, it comes up over here, kind of half-assed around the starter. I think I could do a little bit better job of routing this. And then it goes into a connector, changes color to yellow. And then it goes into the old ignition switch, which is long since gone. You can see all the wires have been snipped off and hooked up over here to my Mickey Mouse switches. And I actually, uh, I thought this was the, earlier I had thought this was the kill wire, so I depinned it from the plug, and it turns out I did that for nothing. So that makes sense as to why I couldn't get the spark to stop when I was grounding it to here. It was sparking, but it wasn't, wasn't killing the spark, so I was just short-circuiting something. <laughs> That's how you learn. Just got to pay close attention to where these things go, you know, like something like this here. You gotta wiggle it because there's a lot of black wires in here. You'd assume this is it. This is coming out of the underneath here, so it's part of the charging system. These are your stator wires, and this wire, because it's fat, it's got a diode in it, and that, that rectifies your AC current to DC. And these go to your battery, basically. Well, one of them does. So that's that. Your battery or your. Uh, Ignition your electrical system by, by default the battery So now if I were a betting man, I'm gonna say the short is on this black wire because I mean look look at all the sharp metal stuff And we got heat we got the exhaust right here it's right next to that. I mean you couldn't have picked the worst way to Route this thing, but hey, there is not too many options Well, I guess there is I could go this way This would be miles ahead ran it around this way. We got the throttle to worry about but and just keep it low and we got the steering here so keep that in mind i think i'm going to send this the other way if i can so i got this wire out of here I connected it back up i don't see any damage to it but there's definitely something going on there because i'm getting intermittent readings power probe back up here welcome yeah, this is more for my automotive side of things. I got the charger on there right now, so we're at 14 and a quarter. If this goes straight to ground, we got a problem, Houston. And it does. So that's shorted. Why is it shorted? It doesn't make any sense. So this is going to drive you guys nuts for a little bit, but I'm going to plug this in, let it scream for a little while. I'm going to try not to spread the terminals on this. I'm going to go above it, so if anything, it's going to mash the terminals down. You don't want to spread the terminals, have a loose connection. Then you won't be able to shut the machine off, you know. But that'll drive you nuts. But be patient. I'm going to see if I can't back probe this. Do something with it. Get it to stay. This I'm going to have to hold it. Huh. Ah. That's a safety switch. Ain't that something? Look at that. The safety switch is sticking. Ha! So you know what we're going to do about that, don't you? <laughs> we're going to bypass that sucker. Now you do you, I'm going to do me. As long as we agree that if you do something stupid, you don't come and uh, try to take everything I've earned. My blood, sweat, and tears that I've worked hard for my whole life. I'm trying to help people out, of you know? I don't want my good deeds to go punished. I don't, I've had enough punishment in my life. So if you want to sue somebody, go find somebody else. They ain't got much. So there's that safety switch to get a perspective of where I'm going here, going down behind the steering shaft. This is a switch right here. I got no light in here, so this is a shitty video. Come on, damn it, get in there. So that's the switch. When you press the brake, this is, 
what that is, that just locks the starter out. But apparently it also locks the ignition out, which I wasn't aware of. Why would that? Let me try to think about it. Okay, so I found out where those, where the connection happens. And, and both the yellow wire for the safety switch and the yellow kill wire, they both join together inside the switch here. And then that continues on, goes to the back, I assume. It goes, yes it does, it goes to the uh, seat switch, which I left disconnected. There's two yellow wires in there, because we don't need no stinking seat switch. Don't get off your mower when it's running, that's all. I think what I'm gonna do is just snip this wire right here instead of deep pinning it, because it's connected to another wire. I'm actually gonna cut it right about here, and we're gonna zip tie a switch over here. That'll be my kill. We shall see. But I wanted to show you guys, remember our nice plastic weld job we were doing? Well, I was over here working and I started smelling gas and I'm like, what the hell happened here? It blew out on me. So this is the whole, this whole side of the tank got sun. So I guess just that little bit of gasoline being in here caused this to let go. So, so now we got fumes in the tank. So I guess... Uh, might as well make a video on how I get rid of, how I already showed you how I plastic weld, so I don't have to do that again, but I'm gonna show you how I resolve the fume problem. It's kind of unorthodox, and it's probably gonna trigger a lawsuit, but times are tough, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? A little common sense goes a long way, you know? I'm gonna cut this yellow wire here. So just to, uh, strippers ain't gonna work. Okay, make sure my meter's all good here. Seeing that number that high, but if you move it around enough, you'll it'll it'll come down. Looks like half. Well, there we go. That's what I like to see is right there. Just got a bad connection. Just gonna stick that in there if I can. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Continuity, so we're on the right way. I just want to double check. So I want to route this around this way, around the back way, if I can. Well, that escalated quickly. I got all fancy, drilled a hole. Like I said, I wasn't going to do, but I changed my mind because zip tying it to the wires was just after I had joined two zip ties together and it slipped off and they tightened up on each other. I decided to just do it the right way. And so this is, I had to take the little pin out of the on off thing here to flip it around because on is off and off is on because on means you got continuity we got continuity to ground that means we got no spark so so i had to wire it backwards so that means we'll have spark because it's off but it's really on in our case if you're not confused enough by that we just ran the wires down here perfect this is a Headlights. This goes up completely unprotected. You know what? I might slide some con. Uh, I always call it conduit. Slide some wire loom over there. For right now, I'm gonna go fishing here. See what kind of prizes we got in here. There's always a prize. See? A couple mouse eating hickory nuts. Okay, I don't even need a test light the way this thing's facing. Hopefully the bungee cords get the brake pulled in far enough. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now let's hit the kill switch. Yep, she's working. Switch on. Perfect. It's like the forces of the universe are keeping me from getting this thing running. Now I gotta fix this thing before I do anything. I'm gonna put some flame over here. Of course, we're gonna do this out here just in case. Man, it's not gonna explode. It's, it's probably gonna shoot a blue flame out of the top. Burned and I didn't notice it because it smells like exhaust in there. On the right, it's ugly, but it's leak free. <laughs> What a, what a disaster. See, all that that's the problem with that type of uh, plastic welder I have. If you 
take too much time in between. You, you need something to kind of push the old stuff through because it ends up burnt like this. It looks like crap. I don't care what this looks like as long as it works. Don't care, don't care. It's just gonna hold gas. It looks like the uh, the line frosted up because we get some air in it. That's interesting. I'm gonna put that cover back on because that's all your air cooling. So you don't really want to run these types of engines too long without the cover on because that fan is supposed to send all the air directly to here, not all over the place. All right. <clears throat> I broke the cardinal rule of repair. I put all my tools away before making the test run. That's always a no-no. That's how you jinx yourself. If you're superstitious, put all your tools away and you're guaranteed to have 15,000 problems that you didn't count on. Let's turn this gas on. See if that haze goes away there. Here comes the fuel. Hey, look at that. That's pretty neat. Yeah, now you can see through it again. There she goes. Just don't overflow on me. All right, we're about ready to light this thing off. Switch is on. Just gonna put this switch on. Every time you put your tools away. All right. You're going to see if the charging system's working. We were at 1292 because I just took it off the charger. Choke. Let it rip potato chip. That'll do it. All right, clean that soaking wet spark plug off. See if we can get this thing to light off now. Ignition on. Oh, didn't turn the carburetor thing on. or ignition problems. I can't really tell what it's... Whew, that's all mouse nest <laughs> burning off of there. Dang it. It was running too rich, then it was running too lean. There's a little bit of everything.
right down good, that's good. I think we had a, a valve that wasn't sealing at first there from sitting all that time. I think it just needs a little heat to go through it and uh, might fix itself. We'll see. All right, so she ran. Then I started smelling a familiar smell and a little bit of smoke came out from underneath it. Uh oh, what's all this? Looks like something was on its last leg under here. Oh yeah. That little pulley seizure. I think I caught it before I blew the belt off it, which is good. We can fix that. Man, it melted right through the plastic. Oh yeah, she locked up good. I don't even know how that happened. Oh, she cut right into it. It's got plastic all over the back of it now. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you let things sit outside. Nothing good can come from packing stuff outside. That's just yet another thing. So I think that's about it for this video. That was my goal was to get her running. Everything else is kind of secondary. Maybe I'll shoot some video on uh, installing that deck. I still gotta take this uh, step that I made for my neighbor off of here. Then I can use that to shore up my plow. It's always a useful mow blades around here. If I ever get my hearing back, oh yeah, this part of the, just found part of the pulley. <laughs> it's pretty crispy. I ended up pushing the brake in. To, when I saw the smoke, I'm like, uh oh, something's happening down there. So she turned that off too. Yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed that one. Hope you get some, some ideas. We might be uh, having to restore some stuff that we never thought we'd have to restore because of uh, the idiots running the world today. They created the problem. They need to fix it. They don't need to be putting it on us. If there was any morals left in the world, they would fix the problem the way they should be fixing it and not leave it to us to have to deal with their screw-ups. So uh, that's all I got to say about that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.